again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors. Without you, we would not have this conversation. So we're very excited for your support. And uh, you can see that those, those logos on the screen are growing. Hey, I'm Julia Patrick. For most of you will know that, the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Jarrett Ransom, my trusty co-host, the Nonprofit Nerd, will not be with us on the show today. She is working with a major university and one of her clients in a fascinating um, project where her nonprofit client has been reviewed by a business school. So as soon as that's over, we can't wait to get her on to find out how this has gone. It's a major consulting opportunity that's basically free. Um, so super cool. And Jarrett, we will see you tomorrow. More importantly, we have Scott Thomas. Welcome. <laughs> hey, we're excited. If you were joined us a little early, Scott is coming to us from Orlando, Florida. Yep. Amazing. Scott is um, the CEO of Stewardship Matters, and we're really excited to have him on the show today because we're going to talk about the mysterious DAF, Donor Advised Funds, which seems to have everybody a Twitter and a buzz because why is that, Scott? Give, give us some enlightenment here. Well, what is the fastest growing charitable vehicle in the United States? It's the DAF, known as the Donor Advised Fund. And its growth comes from two major places. Um, national charities are creating donor advised funds at a phenomenal rate. In fact, um, over the last couple of years, um, it went from 167,000 just in the national charities to uh, 593,000, 255% increase in three years. During the same period, Individual donors, donor advice funds, that during that same period of 2016, 17, 18, it went up 150% from 289,000 to 728,000. So we're talking about over a million accounts that are charitable buckets. It has charitable money in it. That gets me excited. And it should get us all excited. And one of the reasons why I'm really happy to have you on with us is that it seems like it's kind of this murky thing um, that in my mind, not enough um, nonprofits really understand that these vehicles are picking up steam. And so then it puts them at a disadvantage when they're cultivating legacy donors, you know, deeper stewardship. So that's why I'm super excited to have you on. So um, let's start out with this. I mean, who is creating the, the DAFs? Um, it's, it's individuals, right? But it right. could also be a family yep. or it could be a business, right? So, yeah, what it typically happens if, let's say, um, a business wants to do it, it's a little bit different, uh, mm -hmm. generally because that's really dealing with the individual side. Okay. So what we find is the business owner can do some really specialized things with donor advised funds. And I'd like to talk about impact investing a little later, but mm -hmm. let's just unpack a couple of other things about this. So we've all heard the number from the Paul Skirvish study that says $68 trillion is flowing from you know, the silent to the boomers, flowing down to Gen X and so forth. And so there's this massive amount of money that's going to be moving over the next 25 years. Interesting enough, Donor advice funds are growing substantially. Um, and National Philanthropic Trust and Giving USA, these are organizations that are doing a lot of matrix, a lot of uh, studies around this. And it's grown almost 400% in the last 10 years. Okay, so that's exciting growth. Let me ask you a question What does everybody want to ask for? What, where, what do you ask for? You say, cash or credit card, right? Mm -hmm. Give me a check, a cash or credit card. If you look at how many of the assets in the United States are actually cash or check, it's anywhere from the studies will say from 2% to 8%. Look, let's round it up to 8%. So what does that make everything else that's not cash and, and, a, and a check? Mm -hmm. Non-cash, guess what? Donor advised funds are a big part of that. Retirement so you can account. 
real estate, can, business centers, those can all be given to charity too. But you can put um, in that donor advised fund portfolio, you could put real estate, art yes. collections. So it's not just a cash vehicle. Yes, yes. And, and that's a big, I, uh, that's a woohoo thing. So yeah. think about this. So right now I'm talking to some people about putting art into it instead of paying the 28% upfront. Uh, I'm talking to people about putting their S corporation into a donor advice fund so they can put the S corp in there and now efficiently be having this an asset protected vehicle that they can do more significant giving. Mm -hmm. So the earnings on that portion that's inside the donor advice fund, mm -hmm. guess what? They're not paying taxes on it. So let's say you gave 10% of your business and you put it into a donor advice fund. And that's generally 10 to 20% is kind of what I've been hearing uh, nationally. And so in that, think about it. You've got a business that's worth $5 million and you're doing 20%. That's a million dollars into a charitable bucket. Okay. Mm -hmm. So when the whole pandemic started back in March and things got crazy, it was amazing. I was looking at one of the uh, stats for one of the largest donor advice funds in the country in the first quarter with the majority of it between um, February 15th and March 31st, over $2 billion in one donor advice fund paid out. And a lot of it was... Um, poverty alleviation, you know, uh, the communities type stuff, the majority of the dollars went that way. I'm going to be very excited to see what are the actual numbers when it's all reported next year to see what happened during COVID-19. Right. I think we're going to find some pretty significant checks going out there and a great place to ask, because think about it. You got laid off from work. You, uh, you're talking to someone who's been a donor, but now their cash is squeezed. Maybe they've helped someone. And now they're in a place where they're going, I don't have a lot of cash, but if they have a big cash bucket sitting in a charitable bucket, it's already designated. They've already got the tax deduction. Why not encourage them? Ask your donors, do you have a donor advice fund? Do you have a private foundation? Mm -hmm. yeah. Ask them. I think but, you're, and, and they'll say, why do you want to know? Say, well, you know, that's a place where you can give dollars. You've already gotten a tax deduction. Okay. It could be a, a, an efficient place to give. Right. So, um, I, God, I have so many questions. So can, <coughs> pardon me, can you give me an idea about like what some of these starting amounts are? I mean, are these yeah. like only for the fabulously wealthy or can a teacher from, you know, middle America start working on something like this? Yeah, so um, interesting enough, the largest amount of money that's been going into the donor advice funds has been kind of the top 10 donor advice funds. Big names, um, very transparent, some real quality companies, and I work with most of them, all right? So I tell people I'm, um, I'm agnostic when it comes to these products because if you worked with one of the organizations on the wealth side, mm -hmm. And why not just make it simple and say, well, we'll just open a charitable bucket over there at this organization. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're not tied into that, then I have independent organizations that are very large, uh, three significant ones that have billions of dollars in it. Mm -hmm. So um, the, the average that I was seeing um, for a startup was $10,000. And it's That's been it? that way for quite a while. Now, several of the companies that were larger started moving their 10,000 up to 25,000 okay. in order to just kind of move the level up. And so what I'm seeing is more 25,000 for the larger ones. However, um, community foundations are also donor advised funds. Yeah. Think about it. Yeah. Every community foundation is in, in an essence a, a donor advice fund. And oftentimes you could find a five or $10,000 entry. Mm -hmm. And so what's actually been happening is there's a lot of new donor advice funds, both at the national level and the individual level, where they've actually decreased by about 30% for the uh, average funding. Mm -hmm. So funding uh, amounts have actually been coming down. Number of accounts have been going up, 
the total in investments and the total grants have all been moving up significantly. So okay. I did a little bit of research for knowing that you were going to come on and I came up with $121 billion seemed to be the number that as of the last reporting, which would really be kind of the full of, of 2018, that that's what had been contributed into so DAFs. I that, mean, that's that is correct. a heck of a lot of money. That's a whole bunch of I mean, money. I'm going to repeat inside that. of that 121 billion, um, that was December of 2018. 18, right. Yes. Here right. we are almost right. two years later. It's going right. to be a, a much bigger number. Right, right. So, and then as part of that same, and it was giving USA report um, that there are 730,000 DAFs. I got to believe that number as you started out, it's going to just, it's, it'll, it's, it'll, it, it's probably over a million right now. Yeah, amazing. Okay. okay, so what's driving that? What's yeah. driving the growth? I have to tell you that um, simplicity, um, education, um, people asking questions, but you know, you also got to know what is a donor advice fund, what it can't do, what's the limitation, and this is really important okay. because I'll have conversations with people at the Association of Fundraising Professionals or mm -hmm. or other nonprofit professionals. And they think that a donor advice fund can do some things that it cannot. Okay. For example, the charitable rollover from IRAs, the qualified charitable distribution, when, you, when you're 70 and a half, you can actually give directly to a charity, but you cannot give to a donor advice fund. And that's a good thing, okay? Because now it's forcing dollars to go directly to a charity, all right? And that's a very good thing. So that's one thing that a donor advice fund cannot do. It cannot receive qualified charitable distributions. Um, another thing that it can't do is it can't pay for what we call uh, charitable entertainment, galas, auctions, dinners, golf, um, all those, those things that have intrinsic or, you know, the intrinsic value to it. You can't do that. Okay. Um, I have my three kids go to private school, two are in private college, one's in private high school. Mm -hmm. I can't go use donor advice fund and gift to the school and get a tax deduction and then go get that done. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, sure. And people get confused thinking that, and you also can't make grants to individuals. Okay, and it has to be so a 501c3. That's important to know. And, and so like, let's say there was an organization that wasn't a 501c. Mm -hmm. You can't do a grant from a, this qualified 501c, you know, which is a donor advice fund. They're gonna get in trouble. And so they have to verify and do background checks. And so even this week, um, a small nonprofit that I'm working with wanted to set up a donor advice fund on the institutional side. Mm -hmm. Now it's a really, really small one. Um, I mean, their total contributions last year were like $25,000. Mm -hmm. And it's one individual working out of her house, you know, basically part time, but we have now opened a donor advice fund. It didn't cost any upfront money. It, it's easy to manage. She can now receive st appreciated stocks. She can take in um, complex real estate. She can bring in all kinds of things with professionals. We're 200 professionals that take in billions a year can now manage and help with this process. And here she is just saying, hey, I can be a conduit. Wow. Okay, so let me ask you some more questions here, because this is one of the things that we hear a lot, and that is donors that are really concerned about setting up multi-generational giving. So what happens to the DAF in terms of a, of a lineage situation? You set it up, then can you assign management to your heirs, or, or could, do you have to wait until you know, a certain time? or eight? How, how does that work? Yeah, great question. So uh, you name a successor grantor, or you can have a co-grantor. So initially, let's say mom is on the account and she wants daughter on the account with her. So she can absolutely do that. Mom passes away or has an incapacitation. Daughter can just step right in and do whatever is necessary. Okay. Um, we also see that we, I try to encourage, let's get the grandkids involved. I just had lunch with one of my clients and and they opened a new donor advice fund and they've made a few, few gifts, but they're kind of new to it. 
And I said, we really want to find out your um, six, eight and 10 year old grandchildren. We want to find out what's important to them. What are some things that just make them bubble up and have joy? Is there something they'd like to be participating in? Let's find out about that. It might be something through their school or through their extra activities or in their community. Find out what those things are. And then guess what? We can give anonymously through a donor advice fund. In fact, the majority of the dollars that, that I help people with on donor advice funds, the majority of them want to do it when they find out I can give anonymously. Now, you as, now, now the nonprofit doesn't like this. But yep. what I do is I call the nonprofit because I know them and I say, hey, Jim, here's what's going on. Um, you're getting a check for $500. You're not going to know who it's from. It's one of my clients. They don't want you to know who they are. They don't want anything in the mail. And there's some reasons behind that. And he respects it. And he's just thankful for the heads up and going, wow, at least I know, you know, there's an advisor out there that cares about philanthropic planning. So, let me ask your audience to ask your financial advisor friends, your neighbors, your people in your community, your church, your synagogue, find out are there advisors that are actively in this business. And if you don't know someone, you can actually reach out to the charitable gift planners in your area. You could ask around to other nonprofit professionals inside of like uh, AFP you could go online, you could do some searches. I'm not limited in doing gifts. I can do charitable gift annuities in 48 states. I can you know, help with donor advice funds anywhere for a fee, um, or it may be so, just so part of a bigger you, practice. So yeah. let me ask you that then. Yeah. Who, it, what does this management look like? You're gonna have is it like a CPA that's going to be dealing with it? Or it's more like a person like you who's a financial advisor. Um, you mentioned community foundations. Mm -hmm. You know that. So give us that look, because I think that's one of the things in the nonprofit sector is, you know, we don't necessarily understand who who's managing this. And, yep. and, maybe, and there's a, that's a big thing. We need to know that. So there are literally a thousand vendors Okay. A thousand vendors. So there's almost a million accounts, you know, or actually over a million accounts when you start looking at all of the different things, but there's over a thousand vendors. Okay. And in those vendors, it will go from an 800 number, do it yourself to here's a team of people on an 800 number to here's a hands-on way. Here are local professionals. Some of the big firms have local offices. Mm -hmm. So there's some local offices here in Orlando for some of the large firms. Um, one of the areas that, um, I often hear is like, well, Scott, how do we find these people with donor advice funds? And, and that's a tough one because right. it's anonymous. And, and I, I have to just tell you, take your relationships, take your, your, your book of donors. And as you're talking to your donors, find out, I, I tell you another way that I've encouraged, and I've done some, some calls like this where I've done a call and I say, okay, we're gonna talk about unique tax strategies. I'll give you one right here. Here's one of the reasons I believe that donor advice funds are growing right now as I've given this same talk, this idea to CPAs. It's called bunching, B-U-N-C-H-I-N-G, bunching. You're bunching two or three years of tax write-offs into one year, why? Because in 2018, the tax laws changed. The standard deduction went up substantially. Uh, a lot of the write-offs went off. They went away. Yeah. Limitations on sales tax, uh, state tax, property tax, all that got capped at a total of $10,000. A standard deduction for a retired couple today, it's $28,800. And it's indexed up. Mm -hmm. It's $24,000 if you're below 65. OK, so if you're, you're below 65 for a married couple, it, it's um, uh, 24,000. So you have to look at interest and the various write offs and charitable write offs. Um, one of the real good things that you want to remind people, too, is they got three hundred dollars from the CARES Act above the line. So even if they don't itemize, they go, oh, I don't itemize. 
uh, I don't really want to give to you because it doesn't help me. Well, you can still do $300. Yeah. There's a place to ask for $300 right now. Yeah. So this idea of bunching, what I have found is for the average couple, and we're not talking about wealthy people. We're talking about everyday Americans. Mm -hmm. We're talking about typically about $2,000 a year, I find in extra tax savings, tax savings, $2,000. That means over 10 years, $20,000 extra to a charity. That's significant. So I get excited about it. I go home, you know, like high fiving and, you know, all pumped up. And it's like, I want to go do this again. I wake up the next morning. I'm like, I want to go do this again. I love it. So let me ask you about this. So how do we in the nonprofit sector, what's the best way for us to become educated about these things? so that we can then go back out to our donors because it seems to me that there's some disconnect and and i would argue it's probably fear-based you know like mm -hmm. oh my gosh this is like a financial thing and i'm i'm trying to get you know donation and build stewardship and all this but i don't know actually how this works how significant is this do do people in fund development teams really need to get a grip on this? I mean, you, you obviously can't be giving advice, but it seems to me that in fund development across the nearly 1.8 million nonprofits in this country, they don't have a clue about this. Well, the national ones all have donor advice funds. Uh, most colleges, universities have a donor advice fund. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're an organization and, and you're like my friend who's only had 25,000 last year, you can have a donor advice fund. It's not expensive, you know, I mean, it, it's easy. It doesn't take long. It, it, the setup process is sign a couple of forms. Um, you know, you have to be in good standing and boom, you know, you're a qualified 501c3, you can, you can get approval and have a, what we call a white label donor advice fund. Now you go to your constituency, your donors and say, we can accept those non-cash gifts. Or if you would like to split your interest, um, some of the organizations will say, we'll let you split your interest. Um, I remember the first time I heard that was from the Boy Scouts years ago. And one of my friends was working with the Boy Scouts and he says, so long as they give us at least 25% and say verbally to us, we're not going to hold them to a contract, but just tell us that you're going to do that we'll set up a donor advice fund. This was like 15 years ago when very few people were doing it. And so he got a lot of business because people would say, hey, I want to give to A, B, C, right. and D. Across. And now they're doing all of those in one place so they could take that appreciated stock or that asset. And now it's in this bucket and, and they send it off to these other places. He built a lot of goodwill and brought in a lot of money. I bet. So it's hard to believe, but our time is coming to a close. I mean, it goes by fast. And this is like the crystal ball moment. Um, I know that it's there's a lag in reporting, but I think we can all agree that this is, is really building. It's capturing the attention of so many people in our country. You, you throw in this incredible transfer transference of wealth that we're in the middle of, or not middle, but we're at the beginning of right now. What does the future look like? I mean, what should we as nonprofits kind of be thinking about or looking for? Yeah. So uh, you listen for the appreciated asset. Okay. Well, you know, my accountant told me that I can't do this. You want to listen to that. You want to listen for those things. Hey, they, they are, they're bragging at a party about you know, they bought some high tech company and now it's quadrupled. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? If they sell that now, they're going to pay 15 to 20 percent plus state capital gains. So it could be 25, 28 um, percent that's going away. You can find that much more money so that if they were to donate a portion of that stock to your donor advice fund, you're actually helping them give more. And you could say, would you be interested in the conversation about giving more that doesn't cost you more? Mm -hmm. Would you be interested okay. to talk about, you know, a tax saving idea that can give you greater control and you don't have to necessarily give it all away today because you may be of the mindset that you want to take this asset and you want it to pay out over a five or 10 year period. 
but it's flowing through to our organization, but it's sitting there um, that could do this. Or you may want to have a conversation with the CPAs and the financial advisors out there. And I think that that is a tremendous area that the nonprofits have been missing because they've said things. Here's, here's what I've heard. They've said, Scott, but the donor advice fund doesn't have to pay out. It's not like a private foundation that has to pay 5% on average. Some donor advice funds actually do. One of the biggest ones I use actually requires 5% payout and, or you got, you're, you're kicked out of there. Right. And so that's important to know, but guess what? The average for the last three, four, five, six, eight, ten 10 years has been more than 20% payout per year. So for when, you know, a hundred dollars goes in 20 plus dollars is going back out the door to charities that year. Amazing. Well, you know, this is, um, this has been fascinating. And I, I so appreciate you coming on and talking with us. um, Because the nonprofit show, we we have all different types of people coming in and we hear all these different things. And we read just like anyone else, you know, we're, we're seeing what's going on. And this is like a topic that has phenomenal mystery about it. And in the media, it gets slammed at the same time. You can read another article and it's championed. I mean, there's just yep. all this information. And so I really appreciate you giving us this, um, this introduction, if you will, to the concept that I think all nonprofits need to really be um, marshalling their forces and their knowledge um, because it is really upon us. And, it, and the numbers indicate it's only growing. So you can't just put your head in the sand. Here's Scott's information, stewardshipmatters.net. You can go onto his website. It's great. He has an amazing amount of information. I love you had um, your your vocabulary. You do a great job of explaining um, through a myriad of resources what things are so that you um, don't have to be intimidated by the concept coming from all directions. If you're a donor, if you're working for a nonprofit, if you're a fundraiser, there's just so much information. So check out stewardshipmatters.net. Um, Scott, this has been a lot of fun. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. Um, my co-host, the nonprofit nerd, Jarrett Ransom, wasn't with us today. She'll be back here tomorrow. If you have questions for us, our best day of the week which is Friday, Ask and Answer. It's sponsored by Your Part-Time Controller coming up and you have four ways to get your questions to us. Um, The Nonprofit Atlas, don't miss this resource. It's amazing and um, it's growing by leaps and bounds, a great way to find different resources and talent across this country, nonprofitatlas.com. That's part of the American Nonprofit Academy. You can get to us through that way as well. Again, we want to thank all of our presenting sponsors. Without you, we would not be here. You've afforded us the opportunity to have this great conversation like we've had with Scott today. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Julia. Scott, this has been amazing. You've like blown my mind. I'm going to have a lot of questions. I assume questions are going to be coming in to us. So I suspect we're going to ask you to come back on. All right, super. We never got to talk about impact investing inside of the donor advice fund. I know we got a lot cooking, my friend. We got a lot to discuss. Hey, everybody, as we end every show, we remind you, stay well so you can do well. Thanks so much. We'll see you again.